Hello, this is David with Mudslinger Pottery here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm going to be demonstrating making a soap dispenser form. A little jug. I also do oil lamps. And I use the same kind of form, same kind of shape. So it's a smaller pot that narrows into a, a top where I can put a uh, cork in there for the soap dispenser. So here we go. I'm starting with about a pound and a quarter of high waters clay, speckled brown stone. This is a really nice clay. It's got a brown look and I like where the, uh, the areas on the pot that that don't get glazed. It's got a really nice look. With the uh, iron that's in it, it will add brown spots. Like if I do a, a white glaze, I'll have brown spots in it. So I'm trying to just cone the clay, help center, help get any uh, air bubbles out. And this also tends to uh, force the platelets into playing better together. So the pot is just easier to make. The clay is easier to work with, easier to center. And the better centered you make a pot, the easier that pot is to make. So now I'm just going to open it up. And when I make any pot, I think about the pot before I start to work on it. Because I'll make uh, tumblers and mugs and I like to trim the bottom. So I, I think, oh, leave, a, leave some more clay down there at the bottom because you're going to end up trimming it. Now on these pots, because it's got a, a narrow top, I don't like to trim them. I don't really have to. So what I'll do is open it up and get a smaller bottom, get a thinner bottom. And I can check that with a needle tool. That's a little thick. So I can just thin it down a little bit more. I don't want it too thin because these pots probably work better if they are, if they do have a little bit of weight in the bottom. These pots are gonna be on there on the countertop, in the bathroom, where they're probably gonna get knocked a little bit. They're gonna get moved. The cork's gonna get pulled out. So these are all things that I'm thinking about when I'm making the pot. So I'll open it up here a little bit and start pulling my pot. And I use a sponge. I, didn't used to use a sponge, but I also would tear up my fingernail, something terrible. So I started using the sponge and I don't have that problem anymore. Plus I think it gives more surface area onto the side of the pot, which helps maintain it, helps make it easier to pull, helps make it easier to thin it out and keep it even. So I really try to push all that clay in the bottom in. I don't want to have to be pulling that off and putting it in my reclaim pile. And because I know I'm going to be closing the top of this pot, I try to force it in. Keep that top as narrow as I can. Obviously I've got to get my hand in there so that's something to think about too. And I know that'll open it up, but if I keep pushing it in, that helps to helps the clay's memory. So a nice slow steady pull. I'm trying to keep the the distance between my inside finger and my outside hand 
the same all the way up so that this pot feels even. Pushing some of this clay down to the bottom, back into the pot, and then I can use it to pull the pot up. So I'm keeping it fairly narrow down at the bottom, even though I know I'm going to belly it out a little bit. Get some of the water out. And I use a stiff metal rib for that. I actually sell them in my Etsy shop introduced to, to these a while back and I just fall in love with how well they work, how well they just take the slurry, shape the pot, and just basically trim the pot as I'm pulling and shaping the pot. So clay can go up, but it can also go out. So as I belly this out a little bit, it's thinning that pot out and also evening the pot up. So you can see how much clay I pulled off the pot. And that's just getting all that slurry, which helps make the pot stand up taller, stand up better. Because now it's just a little bit stiffer. So these are, these are great tools to work with. I found I make a lot thinner and much more even pots by this, with using this metal rib. So I'm getting the basic shape that I want. Obviously the top is not done, but I want to thin it out a little bit and get it, get the bottom basically where I want it. I still have to work the top. And because I don't want to trim these pots, but I do want a foot, I've got a little trick that I use. So I've taken a credit card and I just drilled a hole right there in the bottom of the credit card and then cut it out. So now I can use this for the bottom of my pot to make a, a foot. What's nice about a credit card is you can do both sides. So, so sometimes I do a two rounded feet. And for that, I just took a, a hole punch and punched two holes in there to get that look. So I'm gonna get some of the water out from inside here and show you how this works. So I'm just taking that credit card and I'm just pressing it up against the bottom of the pot, which forces that clay into that round shape. And you can see the, the round bottom that I've got for my foot now, which looks good kind of sets the pot off gives it a foot but it also provides a space where if that clay moves and goes down you're much more likely to have it caught there it also gives me a line of where I want to glaze to so that foot will be unglazed and I think it just looks better when you set an area on your pot that is unglazed versus just glazing down towards the bottom and then leaving the bottom unglazed. This looks like you thought about it and decided, I'm gonna leave this part unglazed. Okay, so I still have to work on the top. I want this as centered as I can, so I try to keep centering the top, keep it where I want it. Now, to close this form in, I have to get this really wet. So I keep this part really wet, and I plan on 
where my hands are going to go to start the process of moving this clay in. And I'm basically making three points on the clay. My hands touch it in three points. And I'm just moving this in and pulling it up as I move that clay in. Now just like I said earlier, you can move clay out and thin it out that way. But by doing this method of forcing this clay in, I'm also thickening up the top part of my pot. So now this part right here is thicker than the lower part of my pot. So I'm going to use that clay and push it in. help narrow up the top of my pot. It's thinning out that clay and helping me to force it into a narrower top. So now I can collar it up again. Same thing, I've got basically three points on the pot, it's wet, and I'm forcing that clay in on itself. And if you're doing this right and doing it evenly, you won't have to trim off the top part of your pot. But a lot of times when you do this, this method, the top will get a little wonky. So same thing, I forced this in a little bit but I've also thickened up this part of the clay, this part of the pot, the upper part of the pot. So I can just take that and force it up, force it in. And a lot of times with this, slow down, don't, don't rush this. Because if I take it and just hold my hand, in one spot, it will force that clay in. And you'll see it start to wobble. You can see it kind of wobbling. But if I hold it here long enough, it's gonna force it into that shape. So once more, collar it up a little bit. And I've pretty much got it about where I want it. Once again, I've still got some more clay in here so I can pull this up, help even the pot out. And the other thing I think about is I don't want this lip to be too thin. If I do that, it's 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 not going to hold. It's going to crack or or break right there, especially if you're pushing a cork in and out of there, which is going to happen if it's a soap dispenser. So I do want to leave a little bit of clay up top there don't want it to be too thin. I mean someone's at my back door, which I don't think there is. This takes a little bit of fussing. I play with a little bit. And I've got a cork that I'm going to be using to put in there. So what I've done is I've measured the size of that cork that I want. And I know that my clay will shrink about 10%. So I've got a set of calipers and I have adjusted it to the size of the cork times 1.1 because my clay shrinks 10%. And this will give me the dimension that I want for the top of my pot. So I can check this because I want it a little bit larger than the, the cork because I know it's going to shrink. So 
right now it's just a little bit too too large, a little open, a little bit too much. Still just a little bit more. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm collaring this in just a little bit, making the opening just a little bit smaller. Trying to keep it centered. And that's good right there. So let me do my final finishing up here. I'll clean this pot up a little bit, get it ready to go. I wanna make sure I've got the shape that I want. I've played with it a little bit, so I've changed a little bit. Just clean up all the outside here. I take my metal rib I come back in this will get some of the, the slurry some of the extra clay and it'll definitely work the line of my pot and I also like to have a collar on these pots and I'll show you why and simply by pushing the edge of the the metal rib in there in the top creates a little bit of a collar. Also my thinking is these pots are going to be handled they're going to be wet. There's probably going to be some, some soap on them. So I'm taking a metal rib that has serrated on it. And I'm just going to start down here at the bottom. And create a little bit of texture on the side of this pot. Which I'm hoping will help with just being able to pick it up and make it easier but it's also nice for the glaze because the glaze will pull in the cracks make some different colors and give a little bit of a variety in to the glaze combination so I know I've checked it but I've also played with it so I come back again and check it again and I've pulled it out just a little bit. So I need to just push this in just a little bit more. I want to make sure that that cork fits in there. That should be good. Last thing I do is I take a chamois and I just run it around the edge of this the lip here, which smooths it up cleans it up and there we go he's a great little shape for soap dispensers oil lamps I also do uh, canteens I've got a friend who uh, likes to dress up in 18th century and she found me a, a model of one of these that uh, people would wear hanging off their belt to carry water or beer or wine or whatever they wanted. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'm on Instagram at Mudslinger Pottery. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good day.